Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Hurley Investments Market View commentary for February the 8th. Next week, the commentary is going to be pushed till Tuesday and we'll cancel trade buyings and adjustments. The reason why is next Monday should be President's Day and the market's closed. So with President's Day next Tuesday, uh, next Monday, the Hurley Investments Market View commentary will be on Tuesday. We'll X the trade findings adjustments and we'll just run our Thursday one. With that said, man, let's get some better. So we have, come on. So let's do it this way. And I'll go to home and we will underline it and we'll get it back down to something you can read. So, President's Day on Monday. And the market is closed. All right. So, if I was to talk with you in regards to what's happening in our markets right now. What would you tell me? What would you tell me is happening in our markets right now? What is happening in today's market? <laughs> there we go. Someone's brave enough to say something. Bullish. I mean, in all honesty, yes, of course. I guess that's not fair to say, of course, because the market is not always bullish. Ooh, I like that answer too. Melting up. We're bullish right now. Not overbought on the index, on the Dow. Not overbought, but definitely bullish on the S&P. And we're bullish on the NASDAQ. With that said, I pay most attention to the S&P 500 because that's a benchmark I'm compared to. If we take a look, we are only bullish for the last week. In fact, in all honesty, we only had one up day in, in, um, We only had one up day in January that made us up for the entire month by a half a percent. So we have a pretty flat first of the month. Our market for a melt up, I think is a great way to state it. And Jim actually got uh, both Jim and Dave Westlake, Dave W, excuse me, not Dave Westlake, Dave W, um, responding to hope for more money from the government. We're waiting on stimulus, right? And the stimulus, for all intents and purposes, should be a very short-lived stimulus, partially because we're almost overbought and when i say overbought we're almost overbought right here on the rsi and big money's already in in all honesty big money will most likely take a drop down before it's going to go back up we're going to find valuations that are cheaper so it's happening in the market today um i'm going to use the melting up and waiting for the sugar rush <laughs> rush stimulus package. And again, the bad side is 700 billion going to American businesses, maybe 900 billion. A trillion is fluff. A trillion is crap. 
that truly won't help out our economy. So it's uh, what a bummer. What a bummer is all I'm going to say. As I was thinking, I want you guys to see what I was looking at. I want you guys to get an idea of what was making me make some decisions today. I, like you, am thinking, hey, the bottom will probably fall out sometime in the near future, right? The bottom is most likely going to fall out sometime in the near future. It'll probably come a week after the stimulus. A week after the stimulus, bottom falls out, and we sit here and we wonder what's happening. So here are some of my expectations. On Apple, I think I would like to add a March 150 covered call. Come on, catch up. I think if I had it my way, I am looking to do a march. 150 covered call because I don't think Apple will get there and I want to get paid a dollar 65 for waiting. We will have a dividend payment, but I'm looking to cap Apple. Even with the stimulus, I don't think we're going to get to that 150 ish range. We just don't have um, we just don't have a ten percent movement in Apple to push it there. So that's where I'm looking to go for <laughs> um, that's where I'm looking to go for positions on Apple at a covered call there. With that said, we made a change today on Ford. On Ford, we took off our put, we did not. So what we're looking to do is do a roll. We're looking to adjust the puts. We did not get filled for this. We're looking to add a March 26. 1250 call and we were trying to get 93 cents so that's the trade that we're looking to do to sit through Ford 93 cents we're going to get back 37 cents from the put we're going to add 58 cents it's like getting a dollar credit on an 1150 stock price if we get called out a dollar credit there and we get the dollar more on the stock, that's where we're looking to go with Ford. And we also will look at, to receive the dividend payment. So what did we do? I think what we did today was Visa. Visa, we added some covered calls. March 26, $2.23 covered calls on Visa. Kevin, how did you choose the 222.50 calls for Visa? It was a technical analysis chart. We took a peek and we have a 220 day triple top. We have a trend line that peters out at 221.87. I don't want to get called out on Visa. 
but I want something in place. If we start to get a drop down, I can have some credit that gives me an extra day maybe to make a decision. So technically, I took a look and said, hey, here's what I'm going to do. If you look at Apple, much the same way. Trend line peters out at 144. I'm looking at 150. I'm looking at 150 to give it some more room in case I'm wrong. But this is where I'm looking to go to create some money while we have to wait in these positions. Now, this week, we've got some earnings coming up. And I don't know if you noticed today, but has anyone seen where Disney went to? <laughs> Disney's at 190. We are at 190 on Disney. And we have protection $17.50 lower that just cost us $7. So, in all honesty, I'm most likely rolling Disney up to one ninety. Even if Disney gets up to one ninety five, I will probably roll it up to one ninety and I will keep it out of the money. But man, Disney is finally getting to its valuation of 196 to 203. Something to remember. Anyone remember when we talked about Disney? Let me show you where we talked about Disney. We were talking about Disney. Oh, I can't. I need more room. We were talking about Disney. Not there. Right here. We were talking about Disney at 105. August of 2019. That was the first time you'll hear me talk about Disney, where it should have been at uh, 196 to 203. A lot of time we've been in it. Nice to start out to the upside. Nice to have protection on through earnings. Nice to make some of this downward movement up and add shares for the run up where we're at today. Anyone seen Baidu today? Do you realize in October of last year is at 120? It finished today at 276. And next week when it has earnings, I believe that's on the 19th, 17th, excuse me, Wednesday the 17th. It'll probably be sitting just below 300. I've got people that were in it back in 2018. This round tripper has been a three year round trips. We went from 288 down to 80. So, for those of you that have been in it with me, we're doing three years of Baidu and we've doubled up share count. 
doubled up share count 100% paid for by protection. So three years later, we are now sitting at a stock that most people are just breaking even on and clientele has twice as many shares and a 100% return. Doing some math, doing some quick math just to get an idea of what this means. 500 shares times a 280 cost basis is 140,000, which means over three years, you have between 126 to $144,000 of profit in Baidu, and you're now sitting at 1,000 shares. While everyone else has waited for three years to break even or got scared out, you have a 100% return. And on the low end, you're at $126,000 to $144,000 return. That's the power of collar trading. Uh, Rich, I'm going to keep it the February 26 for Disney. February 26, I'm just going to roll it up to the 190s. The neat thing is for some of you, we have Under Armour. And for this group, <laughs> we only have 48,700 shares of Under Armour. I think I'm going to leave puts at 1950. Under Armour had some good returns, good numbers last time. I think I'm ready to keep Under Armour where it is and keep that protection out of the money. Partially because it's only a dollar twenty-two off. Actually, it's a dollar what? Dollar twenty-seven. Um. I could roll. I could take this and roll it. Dollar twenty-two. Probably only go to February twenty-six again. Twenty fifty. For fifty, actually, that works out. If I could get it for fifty cents and save an extra dollar, I would do it. But don't be surprised to see Under Armour on Wednesday go through its earnings with protection out of the money. It's kind of neat to see some things take off. And we only have a couple that are taking off right now. There's a lot still to go. I found an interesting Highlights, during the morning session on Friday, 389 stocks hit new 52-week highs. And as I went through this and kind of looked at it, I mean, obviously last year was a bummer year, so it's not like they're getting to all-time highs, but Activision took off. Baidu hit a new high. Disney today hit a new high it did not hit it when this one had come out um ford is not on the high list apple's not on the all-time high list mgm resort something i'm looking at to maybe get into was Um, they're just here. So if you'd like to see this, send me an email and I will have it for you. But it's interesting because as I look at ours, 
Visa's not on there. Apple's not on there. Ford's not on there. Under Armour's not on there. Disney should have been on there or is on there today. Baidu is on there. Apple is not. We still have three-fourths of what we trade that can still get to all-time highs. We still have Bank of America that's not on here. That's still 10% off of its highs. We still have JP Morgan that's not on here to get up to its highs. So there is some opportunity still available here for us to take off to higher positions. In general, we are having a very nice run to the beginning of the year. And I'm just going to put it this way and still have plenty of other positions to move higher. It's pretty neat looking at the position that we're sitting in. Expectations. We have a drop on the near horizon that will most likely come after the one week stimulus sugar rush. There's nothing in that stimulus package that pushes our, our markets higher. Plain and simple. There is nothing on the stimulus bill that pushes our markets higher. Now that doesn't mean that you might have the green deal crap. That's not fair to say. That doesn't mean that you might not see solar power do better and some individual companies do better. But please don't think that the stimulus moves all green energy. It moved two solar power companies through Obama. It did not move the industry, solar power industry as a sector, as a whole. Actually, you wanna know something that was moved that was pretty interesting? The company made those big blades for the solar power wind. That was a winner. Something I didn't put up here. President's Day on Monday and the market's closed. Which means what? What does that mean for us if the markets are closed on Monday? What does that mean for us? I'm going to put it on pause. I'm going to type it in. That which means what? No one types anything. I don't see it. Which means <laughs> time decay. Um, listen to you on Tuesday. <laughs> I, I love it. You guys are killing me, but I love it. Which probably means big money is out Thursday morning. When you see the sale or the buying rush happen on Thursday morning, first couple hours, that's it. That's it. And with that said, don't pay a lot of attention to Friday. You'll probably see lower than average volume on Thursday. Thursday and Friday will not be excellent trading days. 
big money's gone. So it'll be interesting to see. All right, what do I have for you today? Um, we saw the charts, they're good. I'm still thinking a 2% drop in February. I would typically say a bit more, but I think that sugar rush will push us to a flat to slightly lower February. March will be the hard month. Earnings this week, uh, the short answer for us, Coke, General Motors, Under Armour, um, MGM Grand on Wednesday are the big ones, Disney on Thursday. We still do have a lot of others that are in there if you're following other ones. Twitter will probably hold some, uh, some interesting comments on on Tuesday, along with Akamai and Cisco, Mattel maybe. Uber on Wednesday might take some headlines. Tapestry and uh, gold there. It's not gold, AUI is what? Barrett gold or what have you? Probably not, what is AUI? AUI is... Why am I not seeing it? It's down below. Yama Gold. So you'll see the big crush for, oh, if you hold on to silver, it's going to $100. Um, gold's going to go to $5,000, $10,000. Uh, supply and demand really moves these positions. All right, what else do I have for you? A very interesting article. And all I'm going to say is, I called it. Mod, back me up here. Buy and say, buy and say, it'll be really difficult to achieve COVID herd immunity before summer's end. I told you the earliest we could have it would be August. And it's just a numbers game that we don't have enough vaccinations available to get that herd immunity. And I made that comment, what, three or four months ago? Come on, Mod, back me up. But at least it looks like um, <laughs> Mod just said, yep. Mary, you can make the comment too. But uh, at least it looks like it's going to happen. So that is something to look forward to. That's something that if you remember, markets are forward looking. It could be important for our markets to come back after the summer doldrums. Let's see what else I have. Three no-brainer stocks to buy, and Baidu is number one. But I ran into something a little interesting that I don't quite understand. That's Bitcoin. Oh, did I really not do that? Hold on one second. Let me see if I can go to my history and find it. Um... Oh, okay. Put my history here. Well, there's all my work. Osterman's are there. Ah. Um, Baidu. Baidu looks like they might be prepping to move over to but they might be prepping to move over to uh the Hong Kong. Baidu, there we go. Baidu looking to maybe do a 1 to 80 split. Where Baidu one to eighty split. If it's going to move from two hundred and eighty dollars 
down to three dollars and fifty cents. We are going to be out of buy deal. Maybe we'll be mostly out of buy deal. Um, I already voted for us to be against it. And the short answer is by going a one to 80 split is not in the best interest. And it looks like it's trying to make it cheap enough to relist itself on the Hong Kong uh, index. For every one share, you'd get 80 shares and it's going to go down to three and a half dollars a share so pretty interesting um there it is after recent stupid actions by red idiots the only thing you proposed you don't split more high stock price will keep amateur gaming committee a little away um there is a one to eighty split on baidu that's in their uh, they came out for us to vote on, which is S9. You don't want to see your stock go into a penny stock type of of range. That just is not going to be helpful. And dang it, I had it in here. Um, I'm going to pause this. Let me work on getting that back up. Give me a quick second. I want you guys to see what I saw. And, and I don't want to show accounts because I had to buy it on doing on proxy. Um, Where is it? I had it somewhere. Oh, we're crying out loud, Kevin. You think I'd have it ready to go, right? I do special meeting. Got it. All right. So here you go. A proposal, change of authorized share capital by one to 80 subdivision of shares. By an ordinary resolution, each share classifies a class A ordinary shares, class B ordinary shares, preferred shares of par value, each in the share company authorized, blah, 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 blah but they're subdivided by 80 shares. And so all I did is I took, well, I took 280 divide, divided by 80 and it's $3.50. Um, I have never made more money off of any stock than Baidu. Baidu is by far the biggest one that I've had. And just to let you know, I've already voted against it for every single one of my clients. Not that they pay a dividend, but let me put this in here. But it is a proposal. And the reality is, I don't care about what's happening overseas. I don't care about them going somewhere else. The fact that you might see Baidu go to a penny stock status will not be in my best interest or the best interest of my clients. So we are voting against it. Um, it is it is not uh, where we want to be. And uh, board recommendations, so plan simple. We 
voted against. But I found that extremely interesting. Extremely interesting that that would be out there. And uh, it's really to help them be able to register on the Hong Kong exchange. And uh, we're good. We took care of that for ourselves. All right, let's see. Uh, our investors that are valuing Baidu, it's kind of interesting. Look at when all these come up, right? February 4th, when it already did made a 100% return. It's kind of like, where were you guys before? But very interesting there. CDC director says schools can safely open without vaccinating teachers. Uh, one more time, and Maud and Mary or Dr. Gupta, the Babu, if you are here, please feel free to, to comment on this. Um, I would be kind of pissed off at the government. Schools have to shut down under Trump and under Republicans uh, due to the uh, the House primarily is where that bill started. I don't think it's fair to teachers. I feel that way because my parents were teachers. Uh, to safely reopen without vaccinating teachers is, I think, kind of a double standard or it's bullcrap. And I uh, talk about a profession I feel is getting the raw end of the deal. It was so important to shut everything down before. And now it's like, eh, eh you know, it does, we don't care about it. We won an election, it maybe doesn't matter. Uh, I don't understand where the blowback is. I'm even shocked to hear that that uh, the vaccination as a teacher does not a prerequisite for their own health and safety. If I was a teacher, I would be screaming bloody murder on what the lack of understanding or caring for that profession holds right now. All right, moving on. Kramer lays out seven rules for new investors to follow. We're at a critical point in the market. This actually came out last Tuesday. Very interesting. I'm usually not a Kramer fan, but his guides, they seem almost like it's uh, Warren Buffettish, right? Augment your capital the stocks of kinds that deserve to go higher over time. Don't try to wipe, uh, don't try to wipe out other investors. Find opportunities to capitalize on stock moves driven by emotional trading. I don't know if I agree with that one. You're, you're trying to outguess the market on emotions. Don't depend on the government to introduce regulatory changes. Don't borrow money from brokers to buy stocks. That's a huge one. Keep a sound head and follow corporate earnings reports. That's a huge one. Invest in companies that are in good shape and poised to do better in the future. That is a good one. So I just thought for some of those seven guiding rules for new investors, I think that's pretty important. With that said, that's all I had for today. I didn't have a whole lot. Let me open it up to you guys for questions. What questions do you guys have that I can answer for you? I'm going to give you a second to uh, figure out what you want to say. Also, don't forget to go to the handouts. I, I should show you the handout. My goodness, while you're thinking of questions, the handout. It's just some information on Bitcoin. And it's nothing particular. It's just talking about how they can keep track and maybe do a better job of not seeing fraud go on, doing a better job of managing mining of tenths of, or hundreds of bits of, hundreds of percents of Bitcoin. Um, I like that they had drawings to help explain it. <laughs> but I think it's a little interesting that this will help most people understand how they're expecting to be taxed on Bitcoin and what the government sees when they're judging the cost of what you purchased it at. So just an interesting handout. Um, feel free to go through it. 
It's on your handout section. If you go to view, click a check next to handouts, you should be able to download this and have a chance to go over it. With that said, any questions you guys have? Um, I don't know, Abraham. Abraham asked, is that the original paper on Bitcoin, author still unknown? Um, I don't know. I don't follow Bitcoin enough, but I was understanding this one just came out a month ago. So to be honest with you, I don't know. I'm not into following Bitcoin enough that I care. Um, it's not in me to invest in something that has no tangible product, that can't necessarily make any money, uh, nothing to back it as a currency. Well, Kevin, we're off the gold standard. True, but we have the good faith of the U.S. economy and the fact that we're the reserve currency. Um, I, I just, I'm trying to give people from all different strokes for different folks, right? I'm trying to give some of you that have asked me about Bitcoin that I have not given enough information on it. I'm trying to give you something that I found relevant uh, to help you guys make your own investing decisions where I might not be the good fit for you when it comes to, you know, Forex trading or, or Bitcoin or many coin trading whatsoever right now. So just something out there to help you guys out. Uh, what do I make on Tesla buying 1.5 billion of Bitcoin? So Abraham, I, I would basically think that, uh, that's a pretty damn expensive bet to make using other people's money in a bond. And that's the kind of, that's the kind of, what else would you expect from the owner? Now, Russ made a comment. Tesla says it'll take Bitcoin for payment. They've been taking that for forever, which I think might be a smart investment over time. But I wouldn't get a bond and buy purchase of $1.5 billion in Bitcoin. That just seems careless for people's money. That's how a third of the, the run down will occur as it levels out. That's also why maybe you, you could have seen that huge run up in Bitcoin had nothing to do with it's the wave of the future, it's this, it's that. It's just a bunch of retail investors on the tails of Elon Musk purchasing $1.5 billion of it. Uh, I hope someone shorts the hell out of it. And I hope Tesla learns that if it wants to be a real company, you shouldn't take money that was bonded for growth in the company and place it on a bet on Bitcoin. Uh, let's face it, I hope he loses his ass on it. For a hundred billion company, I would say it's not that big of a bet considering not so many companies could do that. Abraham, it's got a market cap of 800 billion, but it still really can't make money. There's a big difference between a company, an $800 billion company, and a $800 billion market cap company, and a company that, that again, doesn't make $100 million not too impressed big difference between the two repercussions on bank of america for at least a day without following concern location of the customers yes we've actually have seen this on bank of america in the past believe it or not uh bac repercussions once again some uh Blood alcohol. Hey, blood alcohol content. Let's do a little better job. Bank of America. Let's 
So Bank of America repercussions, once again, um, it's possible that they may have had customer data leak. With all of that said, I found last time it wasn't that big of a thing. And it seems like we're moving back up. So the short answer is um, to think a bank will truly get a big punishment for a quote unquote mistake that happened at a low level. They accidentally gave out 80,000 private information out to the black web. Um, doesn't seem to be that big of a thing. A bank won't take a big punishment for it. Yes, it's wrong, but it does not, um, it does not matter for their stock price right now. And Jim, it should, uh, but it doesn't. And someone asked me a little while ago, ah, Kevin, you know, some of these companies, don't forget, you don't have to like the company to make money on it. But repercussions, Jim, are probably a little slap on the wrist. Another $10 million, $50 million, you know, fine. And off they go to keep doing what they do. It does not seem to be affecting the company like you or I would expect it or like you and I would, would expect it out of someone else that's a person. They're not a person. They're a bank. And they get treated differently. Preferential treatment. The sad news, the fine, what's 80, what's 10 million divided by 80,000? Um, 10 million divided by 80,000 is what, 125? $125 per person is probably it. That's, uh, that's pretty, pretty amazing. And uh, I don't know what to tell you. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you there. <laughs> Anything else? All right, guys. Hey, have a good evening. We will see you again tomorrow night. Um, and we will go from there. I'm glad you're with me. Hopefully this was helpful for you to show you a little bit about what we're doing, a little bit to understand where we're going with things. Can't wait to get some more money in so I can get to work against the portfolio started for you guys. Have a wonderful night, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye.